Well, the Russell 2000 makes history. You are busy, busy with your job, family, and the things that make you happy. Hi, my name is Eric Hagan. Take just a few minutes with me each week as I give you an overview of the economy, markets, and the things that can have a real impact on your life savings. Subscribe now and spend more time on the things most important to you. The small cap benchmark notched its third straight record close on Friday, settling at 1626 and rising 1.23% for the week. Blue chips lost almost half of a percent in five days, with the Dow Jones Industrials average slipping to 24,715 at Friday's close. The S&P 500 settled over half of a percent lower for the week at 2712, and the Nasdaq Composite lost over half of a percent in five days, finishing Friday's trading session at 7354. Through Friday, the big three were all at least 1% higher for the month. Oil ended the week at $71.35 on the NYMEX. Well, retail sales rose another 0.3%. It paled in comparison to the 0.8% March gain reported by the Department of Commerce, but it matched the consensus forecast of economists surveyed by MarketWatch. An 11.3% drop for apartment construction set the pace of overall housing starts back 3.7% last month, the Department of Commerce data noted. According to Freddie Mac, the mean interest rate for a 30-year fixed rate mortgage last week was 4.61%. That exceeds any number seen since May of 2011. Redfin says that the median existing home sold in April spent only 36 days on the market, a sign that buyers have rushed to close quickly before rates climb higher. All right, looking ahead at this week, nothing major is scheduled for today, Monday. Tomorrow we have a number of different companies reporting earnings. Uh, April new home sales figures, minutes from this month's Federal Reserve Policy Meeting, and some more earnings come in on Wednesday. On Thursday, investors react to more earnings along with April existing home sales data and a new initial jobless claims report. Then on Friday, the University of Michigan's final May Consumer Sentiment Index arrives along with a report on April durable goods orders and Fed Chair Jerome Powell joins a panel discussion at a central banking conference in Sweden. Hey, this is Eric again. That's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. If you'd prefer to read the transcript each week, you can subscribe to that at www.erichagen.pro. Also, if you'd like to get financially organized, head on over to nocostfinancialdashboard.com and take control of your financial future. Lastly, if you want to find out if you're invested right, visit getinvestedright.com right now. Thank you again for your time today. I'll look for you next week.